subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Just the time I spent with him in these last two years before he passed, uh, walking with him from the hotel to the hospital while he was getting his chemotherapy and just walking in silence and, and just being around him. Uh, I don't know if I really formed words yet, you know, like what impact he's had on me uh, professionally and personally. Um, but I do know that it's it's the largest impact a human being has had in my life so far. You know, my girlfriend Alia is a bit of a overachiever and she probably took every class there is, uh, you know, from guitar to screenwriting. And I always feel like a underachiever next to her. Hello, everyone. Um, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, this is a huge uh, honor and a pleasure to be with you um, today. Um, as you know, Pratham is 25 years old. In fact, this is our 25th year. And we started off the year with a celebration in uh, Mumbai, which is the birthplace of Pratham. And then soon after January, uh, you know, we had a whole set of things planned for the year. But then COVID arrived and we've spent much of the year uh, coping with um, different aspects of the crisis. And so it's really today in December that we are able to get our heads up again and think that this was our birthday year, birth year. And uh, hopefully we can put in a few celebrations just to commemorate that we are 25 years old. And so really I'm using this opportunity to say happy birthday to Pratham and what could be uh, better than doing it in such August company. Um, just a little bit about uh, you know, who we are and the journey that we've been on. Uh, we started in Mumbai 50, 25 years ago. And the tagline then, as is the tagline now, is every child in school and learning well. And for the first couple of years, we worked a lot in getting children into school in different ways. But we've spent a large part of the last 20 years in really figuring out how can children learn well. You may, as you probably know, we have very high, or we used to have very high enrollment rates uh, in India. Almost 96% uh, of children in the school going age group are in school. But if you look at what they are learning, our annual status of education report, the ASA reports, which are quite well known, show that even after five years of schooling, only about half the children are able to read at second standard level. So really to reap the full potential of the years in school, we need to get the years of schooling uh, commensurate with the years of learning. And that's really what we've been doing for, uh, you know, for uh, at least two decades, developing uh, effective, innovative, and frugal ways in which we can get kids caught up and running. Um, but I don't want to keep you. I know you all are here for a much more exciting evening. Uh, we encourage you to just go back, look at www.pratham.org to find out more. We are all here. But I now hand you over back so that you can enjoy your evening. Thank you so much and a big thanks from all of us here in India in Pratham to Ranbir for doing this and making our birthday come alive again. Thank you. Hi. Good to see you, Ranbir. It's very good to see you. Thank you, Rajiv, and uh, thank you, Dr. Banerjee, for the wonderful insight uh, that you have uh, showed us on the work that all you guys, are, you wonderful people are doing at Pratham, and it's truly an honor uh, to be part of this. Maybe we're, we're coming to the end of what's been an extremely challenging year. It's, it's been a hard year for so many of us. I know it's been especially hard on you and your family. Um, have you had an opportunity, Ranveer, to reflect? You know, has this been a period of introspection? Has this been a period of reflection? Have you had a chance to think about what is important? What your acting means to you? Um, you know, what the coming year, what, what you hope the coming year will be like? Has there been time for that? Well, I think there's only been time for that. Uh, you know, it's been quite a uh, big year in my life, uh, starting with losing a parent, uh, which I, I don't think... Uh, uh, it's kind of seeped in yet, uh, still uh, in some ways de dealing with that. Of course, with the pandemic, my mother herself tested positive. Uh, so many things happened in this year. Uh, but yeah, I think I've had good time to, uh, to reflect on things, good time to reflect on my personal life, my professional life. Um, where acting is concerned, of course, I miss it. Uh, I just hope I haven't forgotten it. Um, 
you know, it's been quite some time since I've been in front of the camera, but it's like riding a cycle, right? Once you are on the bike, then it just takes some time and then you're, you're back at it. But it's, 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 been, it's been a big year for not just me, I guess, the entire world. And we all have somewhere done a lot of self-introspection, some, had some silence with ourselves and really figured out who we are. You, you lost your father in April and, and he was an incredible actor. He's, he's left this massive legacy. Um, he, was, he was extremely versatile. He was someone who had a very natural style of acting. In his 60s, he was, you know, they were still writing terrific roles for him. And, and, I, I, you know, and he enjoyed, he really enjoyed sinking his teeth into those roles. Um, if I were to ask you, Ranbir, in what way has he inspired you, both as a young man and as an actor? Well, in every which way, yeah. You know, I think the person I am is because of, uh, you know, the strong value system that he imbi imbibed uh, to my sister and myself. You know, he's been an extremely passionate man, a family man. Uh, I mean, th just the time I spent with him in these last two years before he passed, you know, uh, walking with him from the hotel to the hospital while he was getting his chemotherapy and just walking in silence and, and just being around him, uh, Everything has been, it, it, it's gone so fast, but uh, I don't know if I really formed words yet, you know, like what impact he's had on me uh, professionally and personally. Um, but I do know that it's, it's the largest impact a human being has had in my life so far. Let's talk about your films, Ranbir. Um, it's been about two and a half years since you had a movie come out. And I know that these things are not in an actor's hands, right? Because you have been shooting, your films were delayed. But Ranbir, when you have such long breaks from the screen, when you haven't had a movie out for so long, especially when one is in the prime of their career, does that make an actor insecure? Well, firstly, it's not in my hand and mm -hmm. uh, in my hands. Uh, uh, no, I don't think I've ever been insecure. You know, I'm just trying to be true to my art, true, true to being an actor. Uh, I know films take time. It's not that uh, that we are being lazy about it. You know, we're just working really hard to make the final product good. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a while. So there is there are a lot of things that other people around you say, you know, maybe at this time you should have been on social media. Uh, you know, you should be more out there. You should give interviews. Uh, I guess things just don't, if it doesn't naturally come from me, I, I just can't do it. Mm. Um, but I don't think I've ever been insecure uh, for the, even if I didn't have work for a long period of time, I think I'm, uh, I'm quite sure about, about my art and, and my, uh, um, uh, and what I feel about my work and how grateful I am that I don't take it for granted. Uh, so I think that's never led to an insecurity of any kind. I think a lot of people want to know this. How do you decide whether to do a film or not? What, what do you base your decision on? Uh, I ask because the choices are exciting choices. What, what you tend to pick are interesting subjects. How do you decide? I think Rajiv, it's, it's a number of things. You know, it starts, mm -hmm. it starts off with instinct. It's your gut feeling, uh, timing at, at what point in your life uh, the film offer has come. Uh, it could be towards, you know, while you're ending one film and you're looking for some work, sometimes a great offer comes while you're already shooting two films and you can't commit to it. Uh, the director, the story, the character, I guess it's an amalgamation of a lot of things, but eventually it's just your instinct and gut. You know, you can't like something and then confuse yourself by giving it to other people to read the material mm -hmm. because you had a certain liking towards something and, and, and lots of people are not going to feel the same way. Same way. So I think instinct is the top thing. So you don't you don't have bouncing boards. You usually take these decisions yourself. So far, I have yes. Uh, uh, you know, and and oftentimes when I've failed, uh, I've been told that maybe you know I should uh, share it with people who are intelligent or uh, you know who are who are more cinema wise. Uh, but I don't think that really works out because eventually I, as an artist, have to go and. And, and, and empathize with the story, the character and perform it. So it's, it's a very personal thing. And, you know, you think over the years, you start learning from your own choices. Uh, some do well, some don't, but eventually they are your own choices. 
you know, since this session was announced, Ranbir, on um, on social media, there's I, I have to tell you, I was I was insanely plagued with questions. Um, I, I feel like I have mm -hmm. to ask some of the questions that the fans asked, and one of the things they want to Absolutely. know is what what are some of the films that you've signed? Because I think there's a there, there there are there are there are names that have been that have popped up, but there's there hasn't been a lot of clarity. So Love Ranjan's film, you're, you're you are doing, yeah. Yes, I start that film uh, on the fifth of January. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a film which we've been waiting to start since. A year and a half, but as you know, Brahmastra and Shumshera, both those films took a while. Uh, and the other film I have signed is Sandeep Wanga's film, which I will start sometime mid next year. What about the Sanjay Bansali Beju Babra film? Uh, no, it's complete uh, rumor. I haven't been offered any film from him. Okay. Ranbir, how? What is your process of preparing for a role? I mean, do you learn lines? Do you base it on a character or a person? Do you observe? I ask you because you know I remember talking to. Rajkumar Hirani, with whom you did Sanju, and he said he said he never saw you prepare. He never saw the process, and and for that one, there had to be a process because you were playing someone who you know who you knew and who existed, and there was a part of it had to be based on on how he looked and talked and walked. And he said he had no idea what you were doing, and then you came on to set, and you just um, surprised everyone by by how you had got got into the skin of Sanjay Dutt. Uh you know, keeping the role of Sanju aside, because I was it was a biopic and I was playing yeah. somebody who was already so popular. So I had to do a lot of superficial work, you know, of like looking like him and costuming and, you know, the way his personality was and walk. But I think I'm like always preparing, like not for a part, but like if I'm watching a movie, if I'm traveling, if I'm, uh, you know, from my personal relationships, from my girlfriend, from my mother, my friends, uh, any emotion I experience, if it's emptiness, if it's fullness, you know, I'm just preparing because there are certain things that subconsciously it, it stays with you. And then when you get a part, uh, you can fill it, fill the part with, with all of these experiences that you imbibe. Uh, but preparation is key, you know, like it's like making a, a, a food dish, you know, you've got to put in all the right ingredients, uh, keep doing, you know, to make it look, to make it uh, taste uh, amazing and then when you come to shoot you have to forget all of that uh, hoping that the preparation that you've put in um, you know it, it kind of comes to play uh, but yeah you know I, I'm not a big fan of showing my preparation I think that's a very personal thing um, it's it's also sometimes actors seem very selfish in the entire process you know when they have to prepare for a part it becomes too one-dimensional it becomes about themselves uh, so preparation is homework. It's something that you do uh, by yourself in silence uh, with your mind, with your heart, with life. And then you come on set and working on a film is, is it's like a lot of energy is coming together, right? It's, it's the marriage of so many people's minds and hearts and thoughts coming together. So you can't really say that, oh, I'm prepared in such a way. So I have to do it. So you have to be just open to any direction, any uh, uh spontaneous change and not be very rigid. So your preparation has to be loose also. It cannot be that rigid. What's been the prep for, for the two films that, that are just finished, I think, uh, Brahmastra and Shamshera. It feels like we've been hearing about these films for a long time. So give us a sense of, of, of what one can expect. Also, they seem to be sort of hero roles, which is not, you don't do a lot of those. You tend to go for the underdog average Joes, um, who of course then mm -hmm. end up having a, you know, an interesting journey. Um, but but you mm -hmm. know your career is the rocket sings and the burfis and the wake up sits which are which are those beautiful kind of character pieces. Um, mm -hmm. Brahmastra Shamshera, fair to say, hero roles. Uh, you know, I think even if I got offered to play Iron Man, I would make him an underdog. I think. Uh, I think that's just something that comes naturally to me. You know, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of the unexpected triumph. Um, you know, I I, I like the audience to relate to my characters and not, uh, you know, have a relatable quality and not an aspirational quality. Uh, Shamshir and Brahmastra, of course, you know, because they are these action, uh, large scale, uh, big ticket movies. So uh, there is a certain preconceived notion. Uh, and to be honest, Rajiv, I've been working on these films since the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've already forgotten what I've done, you know, because I'm already on to my next now. Of course, they're very exciting films. Uh, I've given a lot to it. Uh, I'm really, really grateful that, you know, the producers are, are, are holding on uh, to such big budget films to release it in the theater, you know, uh, 
uh, which is a privilege, you know, to have your films at such times release uh, in a theater is a privilege. And, and, I'm, and I'm really grateful that these producers can do it. Um, but yeah, the, the preparation was intense. You know, it was, it was something which I wasn't ready for. It was physical, it was mental. Uh, I was doing these, both these uh, big, large event characters at the same time. And uh, those three years were pretty rough, you know, and also with everything that was going around in my personal life with my family, uh, it was a hard three years. So um, I'm looking only for light stuff right now, something that I can just breeze in and out and, and finish fast, you know, not these long films. I'm done with but them you, for some time. <laughs> but you, how do you keep the passion going, Ranbir? I mean, you know, when something that was, I mean, it was never meant to take three years or three and a half years. Um, when, when it goes on much longer than it was meant to, how does one keep that passion intact? How does one stay committed and, and not kind of become cynical? Because there have been I various you... cases of films that have taken very long and then didn't shape up the way that they're meant to. Um, how do you make sure that, that that commitment stays so that it does still end up being as exciting and interesting as it, as it was on paper? Because I believe in it. I believe in it with every molecule in my body. You know, I believe in Ayan's vision. I believe in the kind of work that he's put in over the last six years uh, to reach this point. And I've seen how hard he has worked, how hard the entire crew has worked. Uh, so it's, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed by the delay. Yes, it, it's, it's a bummer, but I know that there is work happening every day. You know, it's like uh, you're at it, you know, you're just not uh, waiting for a miracle to happen. You're making it happen. So once you have belief in that, once you have a belief in yourself, in the people you're working with, uh, then I don't think you get bothered by the delays, you know. Uh, yeah, of course, I'm answerable to my fans who've, uh, been waiting for my film. Uh, it's been two years now since Sanju's release, and I don't know when both these films will release. It all depends on um, the pandemic. Uh, but I believe in them, so you know I, I have to stand by them. There is no other way. You know, you spoke about the privilege of of being in a film that releases on the big screen. I mean, do you feel like do you feel like the business has changed this year? I mean, j just in the manner in which um, you know things have played out. I mean, a lot of films have had to go straight to streaming. Um, there is a big question about when cinemas will open again. Will there still be an appetite to watch the kind of films that people used to go into the cinemas? I mean, um, do you feel like something has has changed in a in a profound in a in a major way? Of course, things have changed. Uh, but a good story told correctly, with heart, honestly, with sense of truth, I don't think you can keep people away from it. Of course, you have to adapt. You have to adapt to uh, uh, new things now. So I don't have the right answer. I don't think anybody has the right answer. Uh, people have to feel safe to go to the theater. Uh, I think the feeling of, of that collective... Um, immersion uh, immersion towards watching a movie you know that that cinematic feeling where an audience is together and you're laughing and you're crying and and you know this, the the hair on your small back is standing up i don't think there is any feeling and you can't really duplicate that but at the same time you know you have uh, now these amazing platforms where such great content is is out there where you can just watch it at home at any time on your on your mobile phone uh, so I'm not against anything, uh, you know, I don't believe, you know, back in, back in the day, we used to hear about, oh, television actors and film actors, and there was this huge disparity and uh, uh, between them. But I think all that is diminishing now, you know, uh, platforms, there's so many platforms for everybody, for all of us, for directors, for actors, for everybody. And, and, and that's only a positive change. Now it's up to us how we use it, you know, we make our big ticket films where you need where the audience needs to experience it on the big screen, or you make a film like you had mentioned, maybe a Wake Up Sid or Rocket Sing. Maybe those are not cinema going films anymore. And maybe you would like to release it on an OTT platform. And that just would make more sense uh, for everybody involved. So human beings adapt. We all adapt to you know how life is moving forward. And, uh, uh, but we haven't really figured it out yet. We're still waiting. So let's see. You know, since we're talking about OTTs and, and, and shows, is that something that, that interests you? I mean, would you, what, what would it take to get you to do a, a mini series, a, you know, a streaming show? I know that you watch a lot of um, good stuff. I, I'm guessing you've, you've caught up with a lot of um, shows this year. Uh, well, Rajiv, just a, a good offer. You know, I've really not got an interesting OTT offer. Uh, uh, I'm, not, I, I'm definitely not shying away from it. Uh, yes, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a privilege 
to be part of um, uh, the movies, you know, to have your movies released in theaters. And I am uh, very grateful that I, I, I get that privilege. Uh, but I have nothing against, uh, you know, being on an OT, OTT platform. Uh, I'm just waiting for a correct offer. Actually, I'm just waiting for an offer. I really haven't got an offer from any OTT maker. Okay. I think that might change after this review. They probably think you don't want to do it. So now that you, okay. You know, um, you've said, and you've said earlier, you've said repeatedly, and you said earlier as well, that um, you don't want to be on social media. But Ranbir, when you haven't had a release in two years, when your films have been in production for so long, did you ever think might have been a good, might, might, might have been good to be on social media? So at least the fans had a way to stay connected. I asked because they're asking me what they want to ask you, Ranbir, just because they know I have FaceTime with you today. So I'm just saying, um, did, did that ever cross your mind? I mean, it, it feels like um, it feels like everybody in your business is on at least Instagram, right? Yeah, I think uh, the only uh, thing I think about is is the people who who, who love me and, and my fans that I can't connect. Uh, uh, I can't connect with them in, in any form apart from my movies. And when you have such long gaps, uh, it just becomes harder, you know, because even at, you know, when I was going through uh, bad times at the movies, you know, and my films weren't working, I had so much of support and love uh, from my fans and I had no way to reciprocate it to them, you know, to connect with them. So, yeah, I do think of that. Uh, and, you know, Rajiv, to be honest, over these last few years, uh, you know, I'm asked this question so many times about social media and eventually I had to make up answers because I had to also sound interesting. Uh, but the honest truth is, you know, it's just that I'm a shy person. I'm an mm -hmm. introvert. And social media is a platform where you really have to express who you are and, and, and be original and, and, and be true to yourself. Uh, I'm trying to do that at the movies and that's a very hard job. I didn't want to take a responsibility on being on another platform and doing that there too. Uh, but never say never, you know, uh, because of times like this, uh, maybe I should. Uh, I have been thinking about it, you know, but there's one guy who says I should and there's one guy saying that, well, you know, you've come so far. Uh, by not and every manager and every now. manager saying you must do it, I'm guessing. Every, every day, that's, every yeah. day, like my family members, my friends, my directors, my producers, all of them have this complaint from me. But uh, uh, like I said, never say never, you know, I haven't really closed myself to anything. Uh, I want to evolve as a person. And, and um, so I'm not shying away from anything tomorrow. I might just be on it. I think your fans will be happy to hear that. Um, you know, Ranbir, is it, is it when you got into the movies, you became an actor because and you've spoken about this and you've spoken about this many times because you loved acting because you because that you were drawn to the purity of it you wanted to create interesting characters and and and, and you saw it growing up and that's what that's what you were drawn to is it hard to protect that purity and that integrity of the acting um when when the job has become about so much more than just the acting right i mean being an actor today is about the endorsements and about social media which are not on but but doing so many other things i mean you're spending a lot less time on set and and and, and a lot of it is the rest of the frills of the job um i mean do you sometimes uh, you know question those things well thankfully you know i don't do it so mm -hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, I'm not, I'm not saying that I am, but I'm saying I'm trying to be true as an artist. Uh, you know, I, I, I know it's, it's, it's about a lot of things, you know, like acting is also, or being successful at, at anything that you do is like playing a sport, right? Like there are other things that you have to do to remain relevant, uh, to be out there, to, uh, to entertain, to engage, uh, an audience for a large period of time. Um, so far in the 13 years that I have been working, uh, I've been lucky enough to just stick to my films and the endorsements that I do. Uh, and it's been okay. You know, it's been, it's been good for me. I'm, I'm not over ambitious, uh, about wanting everything. Um, I have everything that I want more. So I love doing what I do and, and, and doing it my way. You know, I'm not succumbing to pressures. I'm not, uh, trying to portray something that I'm not. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be true. I, I can't say that I am true. I'm just trying to be a true artist. Uh, and, and let's see, you know, where that takes me. You know, Ravish, since we're doing this for Pratham, and Pratham, of course, is committed to providing quality education for underprivileged children in India. I want to I wanna just, and you know, what Rukmini said, which is so lovely, um, their, their tagline, Karona Thodi Masti Thodi Padai. I, I, I want to 
take you back to your uh, you know your young days yeah as a kid i mean were you uh, you know were you uh, were you into reading were you into uh, was it was it all masti or or was there padhai uh, as well i mean how good a student yeah, were you of course well i was a terrible student uh, you know and i think a big part of the reason that i became an actor is very early on in my life i heard that to be an actor you don't have to study and i think that was a big motivational factor to me but no my parents were very strict about my education uh, i've never failed so i've always passed uh, but i was very distracted i was always into football i was always into playing games uh, but i did study you know i i like i said i passed uh, but uh, sorry but what is your question rajiv i i i mean were you were you a kid who balanced both the studying and the masti you know um i think so i think uh, my parents did that for me to balance it uh, if i had in my way i wouldn't but uh, i think uh, i think they, they they balanced it for me are you a reader ranbir well i've become now actually rajiv in the in this past uh, i think four or five years i've i've started reading a lot and and uh, it's quite a fascinating world and i'm and i i feel quite sad that i didn't become a reader earlier on in my life uh, so yes i've i've become quite a reader nowadays I'm, 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 i think i'm Good. average i'm av- uh, well right now i'm i'm reading kitchen confidential uh, okay. uh, have you read that no uh, by anthony burdo i i don't know how to pronounce Boudin. his yeah, last yeah, name yeah. sorry for my don yeah. it's quite interesting yeah um, so like different books you know uh, even reading indian authors i read jaya for the first time uh, by devdat patnayak yeah. uh, which was amazing it was an amazing read uh, so yeah so just whatever i get my hands on what i actually learned this year which i was very exciting is i went to dubai and uh, enrolled myself in a golf academy so i learned golf for 10 days it was a sport i always wanted to learn um so yeah i'm i'm, I'm trying to get myself into playing golf now did you take any online classes you know lots of people have been doing that did you do anything i mean at all in the early part of the lockdown you know my girlfriend alia is a bit of a overachiever and she probably took every class there is uh you know from guitar to screenwriting and i always i always feel like a underachiever next to her uh but no i didn't take anything i was uh, like you know initially we were dealing with uh, the family crisis and then i you know i just got into reading reading you know trying to stay healthy mm-hmm. trying to spend time with my family um and watch a lot of content i watch so many movies i probably average that two to three films a day you Give know we watch more class six you know rajiv I, i watched a l- i i mean shows like we what we all are watching you know like the crown the new season was amazing queen's gambit uh scam was unbelievable um what else uh, patal lok it's 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 what's popular that what you know what all of us are watching uh, but i really watch acting? a lot of did you see any great acting that you really that stood out for you i think scam you know chedip in uh, patalok and the entire cast of scam um i watched sound of metal recently uh, yeah riz ahmed uh, riz, riz ahmed and man he was just phenomenal he's probably my most favorite actor working in cinema right now um in queen's gambit uh, uh the girl who plays the yeah. lead uh, you know the crown season 4 just blew my mind um So yeah, I mean, there's so much of content to watch right now. But what I truly enjoyed watching was rewatching all the '80s and '90s films. You know, uh, the Brave Hearts and the Rain Man, and uh, you know, all the classics. Nice, nice. You know, Ranveer, the first time um, we did an interview, I think it was 13 years ago, before your first movie came out. Even I remember you saying that I want to be married by 32 and have kids by 34. I think that was the that was the original plan. Now you missed that deadline. Was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think, I think by, by six years. By six years or something. Now again, these are not things that one can really plan to the T. But are you closer to achieving that goal? Well, I think I would. I think it would have already been sealed if the pandemic had not hit uh, uh, our lives. Uh, but but I don't want to jinx it by saying anything. You know, I I uh, I, I want to kind of tick mark that goal very soon in my life. So hopefully next year will be both professionally and personally quite exciting, huh? I hope so. To be between working, travel, and and you know regular contact and gatherings with friends and family, what did you realize you missed the most in the year that there were restrictions on all of these things? You know, Rajiv, to be honest, I'm quite a homebody, so uh, uh, and I'm quite in the um, in the privileged category, you know. So I I, I could sit at home. 
and 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 just be you know i didn't have anything to worry about uh so i i think it's a really unfair question for me to answer this because it's it's been a terrible time for people it's been it's been probably the worst that the world has seen in a long time um so i you know i can go on and talk about you know i was doing this and i did that uh but i think that's that's it, it won't sound right okay I mean, I, I I've been told I'm not supposed to hog this. We're supposed to take some uh, some love, some live questions from the donors. So I'm going to toss it to them, and they will come in with some person, okay. with some questions. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Thank you. It's always really amazing it. to talk to you. Always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, Ranbir. It's uh, Prashant Sharma here from London, uh, and thank you very much for your time. Question from my Hi. side Hi, is outside of India, uh, who is your favorite filmmaker, and which is your favorite film? and also maybe if you have a couple of minutes any role that you'd really like to play yeah hi prashant uh, my favorite filmmaker while well, there's so many but if i had to choose one i would probably say you you said outside india right uh, yeah, correct he did. yes yeah yeah so i would say steven spielberg just for the kind of he's made a film on every genre and he's just been amazing at it so i would choose steven spielberg uh, what is the second part of the question Uh, favorite film favorite film uh life is beautiful has always been my one of my all time favorites uh, brave heart um yeah i think both of these films would be my favorite and if i had a if i had a role to do um i think over i think shahrukh khan from dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge it tops my list worldwide I don't think uh, there is a better role than that, and the way Mr. Shah Rukh Khan performed that uh, always blows my mind. So, his part in Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge is my dream role. Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, hi, Ranbir. Hi, Ranbir. I'm Sumati, and we've enjoyed watching all your movies from Sabariya up to Sanju. Um, Thank you, well Sumati. Well done. Well done. Thank you. And I'm uh, famous for being a husband, Ranbir. uh my name is suresh uh our hello, question sir. for you hello hello our question for you today is a couple of generations from you so when the sixth generation of the kapoors is in the movies how would you like for them to refer to how you helped move indian cinema forward wow <laughs> that's really moving forward uh well i think uh, you know when i have a son or a daughter and if they choose to uh, be in the movies um you know i i uh, i i fortunately i come from such a lineage of heavyweights that i don't know where my place will be uh, eventually uh, uh, at a certain time uh, but i know these first 13 years of my life have been uh, have been pretty good you know i've i've formed a uh, a good base a root uh, but i think these next this next decade is really going to tell where i where i stand you know about my choices uh, about the films i do the work i do Uh, who i become as a person uh, so i think that would define me but as of now i i really don't know where i'm going to be hi i'm bee and i'm jyoti from the uk um hi pleasure, jyoti nice to talk to you so my question hi, is nice. um in hollywood there's been a significant shift from romantic and drama movies to science fiction and comic based movies um and they get the budget and the box office takings Do you think there might be a similar shift in Indian cinema and if so what materials might these be based on Well like you know like I was talking to Rajiv about it yes I think that that's I think the most it it is the most logical thing uh, to happen you know because you need to drive people to the cinemas to 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 watch a movie and if they can see the same thing in the comfort of their home uh, what is that what is that that one element that really pushes them to go to the cinema um so i think yes you know like when we if i can name my own movies like i was talking about wake up said rocket singh or even a film like tamasha uh, maybe those those won't remain big cinema films and maybe when i do when i pick subjects like those uh, i should release them on certain platforms like the ott uh, but when i do a film like say paramastra which is a a, a big uh cinematic uh experience uh then we have to wait for the cinemas so i think that that shift is happening uh, i don't know how soon it's going to happen uh but i think people are beginning to see it and 
And I think we should look at it in a positive way, you know, not in a negative way. Hi, Ranveer. This is Amit, and this is my son, Arnav, big fan of Bhattamese Dil. Uh, Thank you, Amit. Hi, Arnav. <laughs> Good to see you. So you said you are a shy, introvert person. Tell us a moment, a fun, memorable moment with a co-star, which, you know, you still remember and why. You know, I'm working with Mr. Amitabh Bachchan in, uh, in Brahmastra. And before uh, we started filming, uh, I told myself that this is my chance to really befriend him and be very good friends with him. I'm such a huge fan. So I think the moments just between our shots, just, you know, he sits on these four chairs and I sit on these two chairs. And um, just to sit next to him after a shot in, in silence, you know, in, in comfortable silence, um, or just ask him, sir, would you like an espresso? And he looks and says, yeah, why not? And just to have a cup of coffee with him. And then the assistant director comes and says, your shot is ready. And to walk with him back on set. Um, I think it's been quite an incredible feeling, you know, to, to, to do that with Mr. Matabachan. So I think uh, that would be the co-star who, yeah, that would be the answer to your question. Okay. Hi, Ranbir. This is Deepak, also from London. Good to meet you. Hi, Deepak. I got a two-part question. Um, for some of us of a certain age, I just turned 50, we grew up with our parents telling us of the movies of the 50s and 60s as the golden age. Of course, they talked about the movies of your grandfather and uh, Dilip Kumar was a, a favorite of my dad. He named his daughter after Sadna, the 60s actress. Oh, wow. We, of course, grew up in uh, the late 70s and 80s. And for us, that was the golden time. I've got a two-part question for you. Do you mm -hmm. think of any particular period of Indian cinema as truly the golden time? And then the second question is, if you had a time machine and could work with one or two stars from the past, who would you pick and why? Yeah, I think I would pick the 50s, you know. Uh, I think that was the golden time of Indian cinema. Uh, I don't know what the reason was. I think there was more mystery. Uh, you know, people used to uh, put all whatever they had. I mean, I can speak about my grandfather because of the stories I've heard. They used to mortgage their houses, their wives' jewelry to make a film. So, you know, they had, uh, they had blood, you know. Uh, mm. they, had, they sacrificed everything for their films. Um, and all, I guess just, you know, the way they used to explore Indian culture, music, um, romance, uh, you know, it was just amazing. I think the 50s was the golden period. And uh, the second part of the question, uh, everybody, you know, from Nargis to Madhubala, Meena Kumari, Dilip Kumar Devanan, Raj Kapoor, you know, to have music by Shankar Jaikishan, uh, you know, have Mohammad Rafi and Mukesh and Lata Mangeshkar. They were such true artists and, and, mm. and just, you know, trying, they were building our culture. You know, they were, they were doing everything. They were making it easy for us. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the 50s was the absolute golden period of Indian cinema. Great answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone for those questions. Ranbir, let's take a few questions from the audience. From a bunch of your fans have, uh, from across have, have got in. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read those out. They've sent them in. There's, okay. um, there's a question from Makani Bhavya who says, as a lot of us are MBA students on this call, would love to know what you consider your best business decision and your worst business decision. Oh, well, uh, my best business uh, decision uh, would probably be... Um, Hmm. Still to come, uh, you know, I, I'm in, uh, I'm uh, in the process of, of starting some really interesting things, things that, that naturally come from me. Um, and my worst would be producing a movie, uh, because producing a movie, you require a certain skill set, which I definitely don't have. The film I produced was Jagal Jasus. Um, we failed miserably at it, you know, we, or I did. Um, so I think that would be my worst and the best is yet to come. The best business decision. Okay. Uh, Anita Nair has a question. She asks, is there anything as a, is there anything like a natural actor or is it a craft? I think there's a mix of both, uh, you know. Uh, I mean, to simply put it, uh, acting is putting in a lot of effort to look effortless. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, there is craft, uh, but sometimes you become so skilled 
and the craft is so strong that you start becoming boring because it just becomes repetitive. So you constantly have to uh, explore different sides to yourself, try and become new. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's an amalgamation of two things. Aryan Patel says, my question to you is that would you like to do a sports genre film knowing your love for football, especially after watching and playing with you for the All-Stars? Hey, Aryan, I am dying to do a sports film. I think uh, I'm such a big fan of films like Jojita, Vahi Sikandar or, uh, you know, uh, uh, Remember the Titans, uh, as Lagan, you know. I think Amir Khan has done most of the sports films, right? He's also done Dangal. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward. Again, I haven't been offered any sports film. Uh, and just because I play soccer doesn't mean that, you know, it has to be soccer-based. I think any sport, uh, you know, uh, and usually sports films are about underdogs, right, Rajiv? So it goes yeah. back to the underdog theory. Correct. Uh, so looking forward to do a sports film. Right. Swati Nigam asks, uh, wh which film taught you the most personally or professionally? Uh, a film of my own? Yeah, I guess. I think uh, starting, I mean, every film teaches you something, yeah. uh, but I guess Savarya, you know, working with Mr. Bansali, the kind of dedication and the kind of work discipline that he expects from you, I think that really, really grounded me. Um, and then experiencing the film not doing well, uh, you know, with, you know, coming with so much of expectations and then it truly being a disaster and, you know, a film that was mocked so much. I think that experience really taught me a lot. And I think every film, you know, which I've done post that, if it's Wake Up Sid or Rockstar, or Burfi, Bombay Velvet, you know, I think I've learned more from my failures uh, than the films that I've done well. Usually when a film does well, you're like, you know, budge guy, on to the next. But when a film doesn't do well, you know, you, you really, uh, something, something starts to churn inside. Uh, not deeply, uh, but something starts, you know, you start to question and then things start to make sense over a period of time. So I think failures are always something that has taught me more than uh, the successful work that I've done. Saurav Tripathi asks, one of my favorite scenes of all time was the one from Barfi after your character gets rejected by the girl's family. How was your experience bringing that scene to life? You know, uh, what's his name? Who asked me this question? Saurav, Saurav Tripathi. Saurav. Hey, Saurav. Uh, you know, to be honest, that scene was completely improvised. Uh, I don't know if you know this, that Barfi was a film made entirely without a script. Uh, we used to come on set and then uh, our beloved Dada, Anurag Basu would say, Aaj kya karte? Chalo, aaj ye scene karte ke tera dil tuta hai and, and uh, you get to know that Shruti is getting engaged, to kuch maza karte hai. And then I would go to my van, I would get my hair makeup done and while I'm back on set and he's cooked up some scene, some vague scene in his head, then he'll improvise and I'll improvise. And that's how the film was made. And we had no idea what we were doing. Uh, but, you know, sort of, to be honest, sometimes scenes work when you see it in the larger picture, you know, when the story works, when the characters work and the scene comes at the right time, it hits you, you know. And I think that scene, when we were doing it, when we were performing it, it was fine. You know, we are, we are that honest and true to every moment that we play. But when we saw it with, with the flow of the film, you know, it, it really, I guess, made an impact because the film was working at that point. Uh, but, you know, the sad part about acting is that 90% of it is fluke. So you can't really, you know, you don't know when you've you know, done good work and you don't know how to recreate it. And that's the most frustrating part of, of, of creating good work, I guess, in cinema. Here's another one. Um, what is the filming technology from the West that you would like to bring to India or adopt yourself? Well, uh, you know, what I've heard of now is uh, what Ma Mandalorian has been mm. doing and a lot of Hollywood films are doing. I think the technology, you know, they're really far ahead where they are going and shooting locations and creating these video walls. Uh, so you don't really have to ever go to a location. Uh, but I'm not really a big fan of that, you know, as an actor. Uh, you really want to be part of a world, you know, if you're going to Darjeeling to shoot or if you're going to Africa, uh, you know, the world brings so much into your performance that you don't want to be confined in on, on a, excuse me, uh, uh, on a set uh, with these locations digitally changing around you. Uh, so I think when things get more digital, you crave for, um, you crave for naked skin and rawness more, right? I think Bjork, the, the artist said this. Uh, 
So I, I'm dreading actually, I hope that it doesn't come to that, that all of us are just now confined to sets and the locations are changing on video walls. Sakib Imran Ali asks, if you get an opportunity to work in a biopic, then which public figure would you want to play? A biopic of a public figure. I would like to do my grandfather Raj Kapoor's biopic. I think uh, growing up, I've heard so many stories about not him as the celebrated uh, filmmaker or the film personality that he was, just to kind of bring out the human side to him. You know, his relationship with his, with his wife, my grandmother, his children, the people he worked with. Uh, I've been secretly working on this or writing ideas about this for such a long time. Uh, so that's something that I really want to bring on screen. And uh, uh, another person would be uh, uh, Kishore Kumar, you know, another great, great artist to, to bring on screen. The Raj Kapoor biopic sounds like something you're onto something, but we do it, do it. Sa Sarah Osman asks, RK, would you ever consider being behind the camera, writing or directing? Uh, my dear friend, Sarah, I, I, I know her. Um, of course, you know, uh, to be honest, when I, before I became an actor, I wanted to be behind the camera. Unfortunately, I cannot write. That's another skill set that I don't have. I don't have the temperament. I don't have the patience. More so, I don't have the discipline. I think writing is such a hard job, uh, you know, just to sit and put in those hours and just imagine and then write it down. It's, it's very hard. Um, but yes, direct is something that I really want to do. Um, this time uh, during the pandemic, I've also dabbled with a lot of ideas. Uh, of course, failed in most of them. Uh, but yeah, hopefully soon. I would like to direct a film soon. You know, I'm going to spill some beans here, Ranbir. I don't know if you remember, but a couple of years ago, I remember it was at your grandmother's house. We were talking and over lunch, you you narrated the script you wanted to direct. Yeah, You had an idea and it was a beautiful, whimsical love story. I don't want to give away which genre because then it kind of spoils it if you're ever intending to do it. But uh, you should. It was, a, it was a wonderful idea. So I don't know what you mean by saying you don't, you're not a writer. You had some great ideas there. Yeah? I mean, I, I, is this the coma one and the fantasy? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I pitched that that the idea to a lot of, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of people, a lot of filmmakers, actors, friends, and uh, they all just killed it. They said it's terrible, so I had to drop it. Uh, but Rajiv, you're, you're a true supporter yeah, and you're very kind. So I think you saw something special in it, but everybody just shut it down. Uh, Shanita Jeta asks, what advice would you give to young aspiring film actors? Oh, well, it's, it's, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of dedication. It seems all glamorous, uh, but there's a lot of work that you require to do, uh, you know, travel. Uh, and I think most important, Rajiv, I think what my learning has been is, is just try and continue being a good person. You know, just try to be good to people, uh, try and be good to your parents, to elders, uh, you know, to good for society, uh, help people. Uh, you know, I, you're not changing the world being an actor, you know, yes, it requires a certain discipline. But I think if you have these certain characteristics of, of, of trying and, and genuinely trying to, to be a good person, a good soul, uh, you'll have it covered there. You know, that's, that's the work that you should put in. Ambika Kasbekar asks, what are some of your fears and insecurities as an actor? Hmm. Fears and insecurities. I think what you always truly love, you fear the most. Uh, I truly love my job. So the fear would be the lack of opportunity. You know, uh, I'm, 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 I have opportunities today, so I can be fearless. Uh, there will be a day when the offers would be uh, lesser, the bouquets will get lesser. And I think that's when really I'll start getting insecure. But till then, I just want to be the best version of myself every day. I want to sing my favorite song every day at, at, at my job and, and give as much as I can and, and say a little prayer, uh, thanking my stars that you know I'm, I'm, I'm doing this and, and, and being extremely grateful towards it. We'll take one last question. I saved this for the last. Someone asks, can you, can you say one of your film dialogues, one of your favorite film dialogues? Would you repeat it, please? Well, my favorite one would be, Arfi. Sweet and simple. <laughs> that is so lovely. 
That is so lovely. Thank you, Ranveer. This was really, this was really enjoyable. Thank you for your time. Thank you, um, really, for giving us a sense of what what makes you tick, what draws you uh, to the choices that you make. I'm looking forward to lots of exciting choices. 2021, big year. Um, I'm going to now pass this on to UK board member Charu Sharma. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Always amazing to talk to you. Thank you. My pleasure entirely. Thank you. On behalf of Pratham, I would like to thank all of you for joining us this afternoon. We would like to thank Dr. Banerjee, Rajiv Nasant, and, and Ranbir. Thank you so much for a sincere and insightful conversation this afternoon. Please visit our website, pratham.org, for more information on our programs and a list of our upcoming salons. From our families to yours, we wish you a safe and peaceful festive season. Thank you for being, thank you for joining us this afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you in the new year. <laughs>